Part 2 of the Brockcliffe Pass deals with the middle section of this long and scenic pass. If you intend driving this pass, make sure that you watch Part 1 first, which includes the Google Earth orientation clips, as well as other important information on tourism, safety and local history. From the 4.5 km point, the mountains start closing in as the narrower part of the kloof is reached. The road now follows the shape of the kloof via a big S-bend, then changes heading directly into the east for the next 3.5 km, all the while still descending at a gentle gradient. The scenery becomes more natural and rugged as the road crosses and recrosses the Bramrafir four times. An unpublished poem by Beth Dickerson adequately describes what it's like flying over the Longkloof. Looking down I see, on the seaward side of this long valley, sharply folded ridges, ridge on ridge of mountains, knead up from the plain, deep olive green and shadowed black. And there a master hand is drawn in outline on the crest, a pale clear line. Impossible it seems, but yes it must be, yes, it's a road. Who would travel such a knife-edge course? A shiny spot proclaims a dam, no homestead visible from 30,000 feet, yet some habitation there must be. Some need to trace the cutting edge of the mountain to span these deep indented valley sides to reach perhaps a haven or a place where things may grow. And down below, in twists made tortuous by ridge upon folded ridge, a river winds. Out of sight its outcome in the sea, but sunlight shows it clear, mercurial, metallic to distinguish it from the roads. How remote this landscape, inaccessible it seems, not what we know, on swift and easy passages along the garden route or through the Lunkler's placid length. Maybe it's okay to not fully understand a place at all. At the 8.2 km point as the road curves through a big right hand curve there's a wide junction. The road joining in from the north is a dead end and it's a feeder road serving four farms of which the major farm is called Opkoms. With the direction into the south, the road remains in the kloof, faithfully following the course of the river. Another stream, the Opkoms Rafir, flows along the next valley to the northeast to form a confluence with the Koha River about five kilometers further to the southeast. The biggest peak in this area is of course Peak Formosa, which means beautiful peak. It was given its name by Manuel de Mesquite Perestrello in 1576 and is reputed to be the first European named peak in South Africa. The highest point on the Tsitsikama range of mountains separating the coastal national park from the northern Langkloof, Peak Formosa rises from the northern edge of the higher plateau to a height of 1665 meters. From this point the road begins climbing steeply up the northern side of the mountain ahead. The gradients get steep on both sides of this mountain and in wet weather it might prove quite tricky in a non-four-wheel drive vehicle. There are several small and very interesting villages along the R62 in the Langkloof, one of which is Harlem, an isolated country hamlet just off the R62 and it's a unique cultural heritage experience dating back to the 18th century. Situated between Afontir and Mischunt and nestled between the Witteberg and Koche mountain ranges in the Langkloof Valley, Harlem is a scenic paradise with its mountains, historic dwellings, the beautiful Lutheran church and its large agricultural urban and farms. Small-scale farmers can still be seen tilling their lands with animal-drawn implements. Cows, horses and donkeys roam the gravel roads freely when not in use. One cannot help but feeling a sense of freedom, peace and tranquility that one can only experience away from the noise, traffic and stress associated with big city life. A few hours spent wandering or cycling around Harlem and its scenic surroundings is a cultural experience and therapy that is sure to detox and refresh the mind. Be sure to watch part 3 in the final video in this series on the Brockloof Pass. Mm -hmm.